Bom dia a todos e a todas. Hoje eu vou coordenar o seminário geral. Tá? A Carol está envolvida aí com a, com a parte aí administrativa, está voltando de viagem. Então, hoje eu vou ser o responsável. Uh, now, I will switch to English. Ok, so welcome everyone. Today we have the pleasure to host Veronica Vildosola from the National Atomic Energy Commission, located in Buenos Aires. Thank you very much, Veronica, for accepting our invitation. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Veronica got her PhD in physics at Buenos Aires University in 2004. She then did a postdoc at the same institution in 2005. And she has been a researcher at the CNEA since 2006, right? Yes. And she did a kind of internship at the Ecole Polytechnique, Palizot, France, between 2008 and 2009. Yes. She did some work with Antoine George. And her research interest, it's in uh, electronic properties of materials from first principles, such as superconductors, materials for energy transition, and interfaces between oxides. Uh, today, she's going to tell us about two-dimensional metallic states and superconductivity at the interface with the charge ordered barium bismuth oxide semiconductor. Thank you very much, Veron. Thanks, Walter, start. for this nice introduction. Uh, I really thank the organizers to invite me to give this colloquium. It's an honor and a big challenge uh, because I don't know any group of this department, so I, I'm not sure if I will be able to, to, to interest <laughs> you, uh, but I hope I will do my best. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's true that I, I come from, I did some postdoc and internship in, in Paleso in some group of many body theories. But the talk I will, I will talk today is not about many body physics itself. Uh, more, it is more a specific of a, a material and oxide and that develops very, very interesting properties at the interface and at the surface also. And so I, I hope uh, I can fulfill your expectations. And also I was told to be uh, pedagogical because there might be some uh, postdoc or, or PhD students in the audience. So I will try to, to, to explain some things that uh, sometimes we do not spend time in doing that. But well, I hope not to, to be, please tell me at the, when, when I am in the middle of the talk uh, so that I, I can organize myself to, to finally can tell about my, my, my work. So I work uh, uh, with uh, some people. I never do my research alone. The main collaborators are in theory, Solange in Napoli. I remark her here because we are equally involved in the calculations, in the in the electronic properties of this material from the point of view of the calculations. We also work with Ana Maria Lloyd. Francisco Guller, uh, he is not working with us anymore, but uh, he made big, uh, very important calculations at the beginning. In the experimental side, I will not describe a lot of details in the, of the experiments in this talk. Uh, I will focus in the theoretical part. But uh, they, we collaborate with a group that uh, makes some pulse laser deposition films. And they are Wilson Acevedo, Christian Ferreira, that worked at also at the beginning. He's not doing this anymore with us. Uh, and Diego Rubi, that is the head of the laboratory. So, um, oops, I need to hide this. Okay, I cannot hide this. No. Sorry? Um, no, I made a mistake. Okay. No, we, because there's like a bar there that, um, just the title, okay, sorry. Um, the, this, this work I will talk about is 
uh, is related to the search of new electronic devices with new technologies. The general goal of the field is to find uh, emergent uh, two-dimensional two metallic stakes with novel properties in the search of new technologies that are alternative to traditional devices made by uh, silicon or gallium, uh, gallium arsenic. And the materials that are based, uh, that are focused in this field are the oxides materials. Why? Because in the oxide materials, the orbitals of the oxygen uh, and the bonds that the oxygen made with the other ligands uh, allows to control more degrees of freedoms that in, than in traditional semiconductors like charge, you can control also spin, orbital, and so on. And then uh, you can think of building some heterostructure with different oxides and combining different elements to try to control or uh, induce different properties that are observed uh, in the bulk materials. The novel properties in two dimensions that we, that I, I can appear due to this uh, nice uh, uh, combination of different de degrees of freedoms can be magnetic order in two dimensions, superconductivity, ferroelectricity. And so here you can see a cartoon of an heterostructure made by two oxides that are insulating by themselves. But when they are put together, some things happen at the interface. The, there is like some electronic reconstruction that the electrons get trapped in two dimensions and you have a very uh, controllable properties and to, to build uh, new devices. And here you, I put this phrase because it's very nice from Nobel Prize Kramer uh, that he got in 2000 for the development of a transistor based on heterostructure used in high speed and optoelectronics. And the, that he claimed that the, the interface is the, is the device. So that is our goal to find from the point of view of basic science, to, to find a systems or heterostructures, materials that can develop a new novel properties that are absent in the bulk materials, right? Uh, the, the field of uh, generating two-dimensional electron gases at the interface of oxides uh, got some uh, uh, impulse in 2004 with the discovery of high mobility electron gas at the surface of this system, the lantern, the lantanum aluminate oxygen, strontium titanate, hetero interface. They observe a two-dimensional electron gas between uh, these two insulating materials and the people started to, to, to study exactly what it was the origin of these uh, 2D metallic stakes at the interface and how in order to be able to control the, 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 the emergence of this uh, metallicity in two dimensions. And the origins can be in this system uh, of intrinsic because uh, lantanum aluminate uh, it's a, in the 001 direction in which it is built it is a polar material yes uh, so uh, the, it develops a, 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 an, a, an electrical polarization that depends that af, af, that grows with the width of the of the layer so after a, a, a critical width the the, the Polarization is so large that the system itself has to screen and send some electrons to the interface to, 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 to yield the, this polarization. And that is one of the intrinsic uh, mechanisms in order to generate these 2D metallic states at the interface. But there are some other extrinsic ones uh, that are the oxygen vacancies in the strontium titanate that also can be controllable uh, in certain experiments. And they, the, the charge left behind by the oxygen gets trapped at the interface, inducing also, contributing also to these uh, 2D metallic states. Uh, the, these 2D metallic states can have uh, different ground states. The, it was observed that they can develop a superconducting two-dimensional phase below a very low temperature, 200 millikelvins. 
They also observe, for instance, ferromagnetic order. Uh, there is some debate uh, whether this ferromagnetic order is intrinsic or due to defects. But well, the, the, the physics uh, induced what these to the states at the interface of these oxides is really rich and very interesting. The, there, there were some people that decided to study uh, the surface of just the insulating strontium tartanate. They, in fact, they decided to study because they were they had some uh, some uh, they reserved some data in the synchrotron to to measure something on top of strontium tartanate, and they, it didn't succeed to develop these samples. So they had the, the the possibility to measure. So they did it just with the substrate. So they was they they observed they did some photomission experiments, and they they observed that. Independently of the doping of this insulating strontium titan, and here you see the, the, the map of Paris with the sample on top. Uh, this is, here is transparent, this is a, a bit darker, and this more, more heavily doped. And independently of the doping, they observe the same metallic surface subband with the, with the photomission. And so they, they started to study the, the origin of this metallic uh, surface state, sorry. Uh, and they, they, there is some debate. They, they, one, one of the first explanations were that they, they were caused by the, uh, some rearrangements of the oxygen vacancies at the surface. They could explain that with, uh, with this mechanism. But some of the, the, the authors of the work that are, were Argentinian colleagues and some Colombian also, but I knew him from Paris, they suggest us to study uh, the surface of this other material, the barium bismutate, because it has very interesting properties already in bulk. So I will try to describe uh, very briefly uh, the, the properties of this material in bulk the barium bismuth oxygen three, the, the simple formula unit uh, uh, corresponds to a, a crystal structure that it, it is a perovskite where, where you have bariums at the corners, then you have bismuth in the center, and then an oxygen uh, octahedra around bismuth. And if you do a simple formal balance uh, uh, count, you have that barium is two plus bismuth. Uh, oxygen is minus two, but you have three, so minus six. So bismuth would be in this crystal structure forced to be four plus, right? Bismuth is a very, very heavy element. Uh, and the last shells, you have two electrons in this S band and three electrons in the P1, in the P band. And in order to be four plus, you, you need to, these five electrons gives four to the system and end up with the S band uh, half filled, right? And if you, you this is a projection of the crystal structure, all the octahedra are equal. If you look at the energy level scheme, you have, there is, in, in fact, the, it is not exactly four plus because this is an oxide, you have covalent bonds, you have orbitals that hybridize or, uh, bismuth with oxygen. And you have at the end some uh, hybridized levels that the, 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 the last one that is occupied, uh, it has mostly S character coming from the bismuth and it is supposed to be half filled if it were like this. The corresponding band structure, if you do a realistic calculation, you would have also a, a band with mostly S character half filled. So you would have a metal. Right? But the problem is that uh, bismuth doesn't like this uh, balanced state because it is energetically unstable. It'd rather be three plus or five plus. It, this balance, uh, bismuth is a balance keeper element. Yes, it is called the lone pair effect. So, uh, what, what the system decides to do is to avoid this balance for, uh, plus four and double the perovskite and induce what it is called a charge order system. No, sorry, there is, uh, it is ringing my, <laughs> I, oh, that's fine. 
I apologize. No, I will not uh, attend it all, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, you have, in the single perovskite, you have this uh, bismuth uh, plus four, and in the double perovskite, you have alternate, alternate bismuth five plus and bismuth uh, three plus. Well, the bismuth five plus has the last uh, orbital, hybridized orbital empty, and the, in the bismuth three plus, you have completely full. And if you do the band structure calculation in, for this double perovskite, you have like a completely full uh, bismuth three plus band and a completely empty bismuth five plus band. And some gap, small gap, opens uh, in the electronic spectra. So this, the system in this double perovskite configuration, which is charge ordered because you have alternated between three plus and five plus, it is semiconductor. And this, because these are covalent bonds of bismuth with, with the oxygens around, uh, induces like some breathing distortion because the bismuth three plus doesn't need the, the, the oxygen as much as the bismuth five plus. So the, the oxygen of trahedra around five plus, it is shrinked with respect to the one at the bismuth uh, plus uh, three plus. And here it is like a projection of this breathing mode operated in this material, right? So here you can see that is perhaps the main uh, physical mechanism that will uh, determine the properties of this material. This is the, the, the close relation between the structural distortions and the collective modes of the structural uh, uh, dynamics with the electronic degrees of freedom, right? You have, when, when it, they are all equals, they, they are metallics, and when, when you have this charge order a, a phase, you have a, a semiconductor. And it is a, with the charge disproportionation. I should say that the, the charge disproportionation, this one is, they are not el two electrons exactly in difference. It is much less. This is just a formal balance because these are hybrid orbitals, right? Great. This material, barium bismutate, it is called a, a Peyer's likes ordered semiconductor uh, in analogy to the Peyer's transition. And I, I, I can describe very, very simply uh, the, the Peyer's transition. If you have one dimensional change of one atom uh, with the unit cells uh, with the lattice parameter A, and if, you, if each atom um, has only one electron each, and you perform a tie binding model with one band, you, you end up with the, with the band half filled and you have a metallic situation. But for, if for a given reason, you have some dimerization, for instance, that force the system to double the cell and you have two ions per cell, you have like a, just a, a, due to the, the, the the doubling of the cell, you have a downfolding uh, mechanism that in, because the, the, there is this interaction with the crystal potential, you open a gap at the new symmetric points and you end up with one electron by, uh, by each ion, but you end up with a gap. And this is like a, 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 a metal insulating transition in, uh, due to the Peyer's uh, uh, mechanism. And this is rather similar to what happens in bismuth because you have this dim we don't have a demonization but we have to double the cell due to the breathing distortion and that force the oxygen to go closer to the to one bismuth and be further away from the other and this induces this gap in the in the spectrum so the barium bismuth uh, phase diagram is very rich here you can see the temperature versus whole doping uh, phase diagram. If you go to high temperatures and low doping, the system is a cubic metal. It is a cubic metal, but in a double perovskite way. I'm sorry. Uh, in, in this high temperature phase, if you do, if we do the calculations for the crystal structure that the, this system has at these temperatures, 
uh, we observe that it, it is, of course, indeed metallic, but we, we have some incipient charge disproportionation where we start to, to observe uh, some difference between some bismuths that have more empty state that, that uh, empty, and in the other where one, the, the blue ones that are, have more empty state that uh, full. Uh, so, but already at high temperatures, we have some this uh, like uh, balance skipper behavior that makes the system uh, uh, ha have to some charge disproportionation. When the, the temperature uh, lowers, uh, there is uh, the, the, the structural distortions of the systems start to increase to be larger. The, the system suffers first a, a structural distortion to a rhombohedral structure, and then below 400 uh, Kelvin, the system finally turns monoclinic, charge ordered, and insulator. And if you if you see the, the density of state corresponding to the monoclinic charge order phase, here you see the completely uh, disproportionation between the bismuth 3 plus and the bismuth 5 plus. When you dope the system, the, the bismuth, when you hold dope the system, uh, after a given critical doping, the bismuth turns into a simple cubic metal. And because the, the bismuth, it is, if you uh, dope it enough, uh, the bismuth is far away from the balance keeper situation, so it doesn't need to double the cell. So, for uh, after a uh, given doping, the system turns simple cubic metallic, and below a, a critical temperature, it becomes superconductor. Uh, when the system is low with potassium at the barium oxygen plane, the superconductivity uh, can be obtained uh, uh, below 30 Kelvin, 32. And with, when it is low with a lead at the bismuth oxygen plane, the critical temperature is lower, but it can be as high as uh, 10 kelvins. And here you can see the corresponding density of state of the normal phase, where you have the, the, the S-band with the Fermi level more shifted to the left because it is whole dope. But you have only one type of band. It is not charged disproportionated anymore. So our first study in this material was to study the, the, the surface of barium bismutate. And we studied two terminations, one terminated by in barium oxygen plane and the other one in the bismuth oxygen plane. I would observe is when the system, the surface is terminated. In, this was built in the zero, zero, this is, was not, this was a prediction, sorry. When, when, the, when we simulate the zero, zero, 001 surface, we have a semiconductive behavior as in bulk here. In blue, you see the surface, the, the, the states of the, of the surface of the film, and in, in red, you have the bulk projected uh, states. So none of the surface states, uh, uh, the, the surface states are the, the ones that uh, get out this uh, red region, and the system is uh, semiconductor. But when we uh, study the, the, the surface terminated in bismuth, oxygen, some uh, metallic uh, surface states appear in the, in the band structure. We try to understand phenomenologically what was, uh, what was going on, and here you, you see a cartoon of the monoclinic uh, bulk uh, situation where you have a bismuth 5 plus giving charge to the surroundings and each bond has some delta amount of carriers and, and the bismuth 3 plus receiving that charge from the surroundings. Here you have like an empty band uh, above the Fermi level and here you have like a full band that uh, if you perhaps you can think about the, like a Vanier function centered around this uh, ion 3 plus, you would have a full Vanier function with two electrons, right? And, but if you uh, take, if you build a surface, you don't have the apical oxygen anymore, so you will end up with two dangling bonds, so you will have to, uh, some electron doping 
in, in the Bitmouth uh, 5 plus uh, band and, and some hole doping in the, in the Bitmouth 3 plus band. And these uh, two, two delta dangling bonds would be around 0.6 uh, carriers because more or less if you have uh, n equal two electrons in a band, you have six bonds for the oxygen octahedra. You divide it by six, each dangling bond would be 0.3. You can we can prove this by doing realistic calculations of the Fermi surface of this of this of this system. And through the Lusinger theorem, we can calculate or estimate the, the 2D carrier density by uh, calculating the, the area of the Fermi surface that it is here and divided by four times pi to the square, which if we do the calculations, we obtain 0.63, which is very similar to this estimation of 0.66. That, so that here what we are, um, we, we are suggesting is that uh, there is a, like a new mechanism to generate uh, two-dimensional electron gases at the surface of charge order semiconductors. Then we studied the evolution of the breathing distortions by uh, checking the, the, the bond lengths of the Bismuth 3 plus along layer by layer in the, in, the, in the slab that we have simulated. And we observed that it, is, it was shrinked. So in, uh, further away from the surface, the, the breathing distortion were very similar to the ones that the system has in bulk in the monoclinic situation. And they, this, uh, breathing distortions were like sort of de decreasing uh, from the subsurface and the surface uh, layers. They don't reach the, 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 the distortions that the system have in the cubic bulk phase, but they go in that direction. And also we monitor the, the, the charge disproportionation, calculating the difference of charge between B23 plus and B25 plus, and comparing here we see the monoclinic situation would be this uh, charge disproportionation in the bulk phase, and in, we can observe that the, the, the charge disproportionation occur only at the surface and subsurface layers. So we can talk about a cold phase in the center of the slab that it is insulating and a hot phase uh, because it's more similar to what happens at high temperatures in the surface of the, the system. Then we, we started to collaborate with uh, Diego Rubí in order to be see if this in order to see if this prediction can be realized experimentally. The, the story uh, uh, has a happy ending in the sense that we started to collaborate and we learned a lot, but we still uh, it, it, is, it was still not possible to to build a clean bismuth terminated surface of this material. I will tell you what we could do and what we learned. We, the problem with barium bismuth is that the lattice parameters is really large. So when it is uh, grow, uh, grew in, on, on a substrate, there is a lot of mismatch uh, with the most common substrates. Uh, so Diego decided to build a barium bismuth on top of silicon in another direction, not in the 001 that we, start, uh, we simulated in the prediction originally. So he, they synthesized a, a film, a texture film, not a bit actual by the time. There was one of the first work that he did with this in, in the lab uh, uh, in Conea. And they, they were able to build a texture film a grow by PLD of BBO on top of silicon, but in another direction, other termination, other orientation. So we have to uh, uh, do uh, more uh, calculations with DFT. Uh, I, I didn't tell yet what DFT is. Uh, I don't know. I will. I have a, a slide in, in, in the next uh, minute, but uh, very briefly, I will say what DFT is. Um, here. They build the, the system in another direction, and both DFT, uh, the calculations and, and the experiments, agreed that the system is not metallic, neither in the, the surface in, the, in, any, in any case. And, but we uh, understood why, because they, in this orientation, the system is heavily doped, because the, there are more oxygens that 
apical oxygen that are absent that don't that uh, and the charge left behind by these apical oxygens that are not there anymore induces that there are more bismuth three plus in the system so they they characterize the film and we studied them by DFT and we could describe perfectly what were the properties of this material. But no metallic uh, uh, surface states were observed. Then they had the idea of, of putting on top of, of uh, barium bismuthate a uh, yttrium stabilized zirconia that it is supposed to be an oxygen scavenger. Uh, uh, so to see what happened uh, in this case, if we take even more uh, oxygen to the system, if we can, if, if we can bear that such amount of doping, and instead of uh, taking oxygen uh, of this BBO, we observed that uh, um, what, uh, the deficiency was in bismuth. The, the, the yttrium stabilized zirconia induced bismuth vacancies. And they study the, the transport properties of this film, and they observe that when the, the system uh, has each of satellite zirconia, uh, there is some like uh, resistance that depends uh, in temperature as if it, uh, there were some defects, uh, some diffusion mechanism of defects. And we study the system with DFT calculations and observe that the business vacancies lead to the formation of polarons and bipolarons that, and the energy barriers of this, uh, of the diffusion of these polarons can explain the behavior of the, of this material. But, okay, no 2D metallic states at any surface. Uh, then, well, some the experimental realization of these 2D electron gases at the surface of this material remains challenging. There was a paper uh, uh, reported that reported that uh, the, the the problem is that when when you have so much uh, large mismatch between the material and the substrate, uh, you have some re re reconstruction of the surface that it cannot be. Uh, single terminated. So we cannot have a bismuth terminated, a clean bismuth terminated uh, surface uh, for this film. So I was like uh, kind of disappointed because I was about to give up the, this research line to, 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 to produce, to be able to, to see the realization of this uh, DFT prediction. But uh, I happened to, to, to see a paper in the literature that observed, that claimed to observe two-dimensional superconductivity between barium bismuthate and uh, barium based on lead. I start to be um, uh, enthusiastic again in, in this system because it is not a surface of barium bismuthate, but it is a two-dimensional behavior at an interface. And they managed to build this heterostructure of barium, B, I will call it BPO on top of BBO and on top of STO. So they man and they observe that the, the system, this is the, resist, the resistance with temperature. Uh, they, here is like a, a very large a mix of a barium bismuth lead oxygen, like if it is where bulk, a bulk sample that has a, a resistance that goes up with, uh, when the temperatures goes down and then uh, suddenly, uh, below seven to eight kelvins, it becomes superconductor. This is what we they call the like the bulk situation because they are completely mixed. But when they do this, the layer separately, they observe that for a given uh, width of the BPO, they observe that the system become also superconductor. Yes, below three point half kelvin, or for some thinner, for some thinner films, uh, below even one Kelvin. They claim that uh, the, this superconductivity was two-dimensional. They performed measurements 
uh, of uh, applying a magnetic field for varying the angle of the magnetic field, and they observed that that the behavior of the of the magnetic field was uh, that of a two-dimensional superconductor. Uh, that the the it was the critical field uh, was much much higher. Uh, than the, the 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 one that was at zero grad uh, zero grades was larger higher than the ones uh, that was uh, perpendicular, and the, from this Laurent theory they estimated the the width of this superconducting phase to be around eleven nanometers, what was much lower than the than the nominal thickness of the BPO layer on top. And then they provide some, some structural information that was uh, useful for us to do the calculations later. They observed that the films grow epitaxially and relax on top of FTO and that BPO was strained on BBO. So we decided to study from first principles this material, this structure, BBO and BPO. I, just a brief comment about what this uh, uh, BPO material uh, is. Uh, lead has, instead of having five electrons as this mood, has four electrons. So this lead material is very happy with the plus four balance in this, uh, in this uh, combination of perovskite. So it, is, it grows in a single perovskite uh, crystal structure. And the heterostructure of a single double perovskite induces interfacial electronic and structural reconstruction. We do uh, DFT calculations to study the layers of different sizes and compositions, different uh, sizes of BPO on top of different sizes of BBO layers. Before going on with this work, let me give you just a brief uh, comment of what DFT is. DFT just if any student is in the audience. DFT is a theory that allows to obtain the exact total energy of a system composed by many interacting fermions, uh, like atoms, molecules, solids. Instead of solving the many body full Schrodinger equation with the wave function that has all the coordinates of all the electrons and all the coordinates of all the ions in the system, in an adiabatic approximation, the, uh, the, the theory uh, managed to to write the total energy of the system in terms of the charge density of the system, that is much simpler function. So it builds a functional of the charge density. That is why it is DFT, density function theory. And in order to obtain, to calculate this energy, it, it, it uses an auxiliary uh, set of equations, one body equations that you can see here, the, you know, when you have one body wave functions that has a kinetic energy and an effective potential that has all the information of the system. It can be an atom, a molecule, whatever. And if you're at the, these Kohn and Sham equations that were proposed by Kohn and Sham, demonstrate that the charge density that minimizes this auxiliary one body set of equations is the same charge density of the total uh, energy real of interacting system. So at the end of the day, you, by solving this set of auxiliary equations, if you know this exact potential, uh, you can have the total energy, the ground state of the total energy of the real interacting system. For this, uh, the development of the, the theory, they give the Nobel Prize to Walter Kohn, together with the, the guy who had uh, built the software, to, to perform these calculations in 1998. Then, you, but the problem is that we don't know this exact uh, uh, potential. It is a potential that uh, takes into account the interactions among the, the, these fermions. We don't know the, the, the analytic form of the potential, so we have to uh, do some approximations. The first approximations were some local approximations uh, one of the most used approximations is called the general gradient approximation. Uh, it's a semi-local approximation for the electronic exchange and correlation potential. It has, due to these local approximations, it has uh, some self-interaction errors. Uh, and these self-interaction errors 
uh, induces some overestimation of the electron binding, some over the localization of the electrons, and consequently some underestimation of the energy gap in semiconductors. So one way to to partially correct this self-interaction error or this local functional is to introduce a fraction of a perfect exchange uh, like interaction, like in the non-local Hartree-Fock uh, interaction that doesn't have by construction the self-interaction error. So you correct this self-interaction error with this hybrid functional. You partially correct this uh, error and the overbinding and the gaps. The main drawback is almost two order of one need more computational demanding. That is what we made with uh, our colleagues. Uh, we made some studies to analyze that we can safely uh, treat the, the electronic, the structural relaxation of the material at the GGA level and to only apply this hybrid functional at the electronic level. We, we, we check it to the bulk situation and we apply this methodology to the to the B layer. So we calculated for these different sizes of, of slabs and we here you, you can see half of a unit cell and you we see this would be the interface of a BPO with BBO um, and what we observe is that there is like a charge transfer between the two materials and in the structural, from the structural point of view, we observe that the, the bleeding distortions, uh, here you see the distance, of the bond lengths uh, around the bismuth 3 plus and the bond lengths around the bismuth 5 plus, the structural distortions remain the same as in bulk, far away from the interface. In, in fact, even in, in the layer two and three, and but at the interface, there was like some uh, partial breaking of this breathing distortion where the bond length between this one three plus and the option sense decreases and uh, the other one stays rather more or less the same, but the, the distortion uh, between these bond lengths were uh, decreased. From the electronic point of view, here you can see the projected densities of state layer by layer, layer three, layer two, layer one, and the, 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 the first layer of BPO. And we observe here in blue, the bismuth three plus uh, M, uh, full state, and in red, the bismuth five plus MP state, uh, further away from the surface, we, we, we can observe the insulative behavior. and when we go to the interface, there is like some whole doping of the bismuth 3 plus. Uh, the, the bismuth 5 plus looks uh, very similar to the one in bulk in terms of uh, charge. And then there is some doping of the lead band, right? We have some electron doping from lead and whole doping in the bismuth 3 plus. So we observe the charge disproportionation at layer two and three. Layer one turns metallic due to the charge transfer between bismuth three plus and the on top BPO layer, and the semiconductor behavior remains at the center at the center of the slab. So we we can show that we have an interfacial two-dimensional electron gas in this material. And we when we look to the band structure of this, and we project in colors the the, the main character of this blue uh, band at the Fermi level uh, has to do with the, is the character of the bismuth 3 plus of the interface. And this is the corresponding charge density of this blue band. And this green band corresponds to the uh, wider lead S band that dopes with electrons to the BBO. And this is the charge density which is, uh, of this lead band that is much more delocalized. So we can talk about that we have S bismuth 3 plus at Fermi level that are quasi two dimensional states and that comes uh, mainly from the inter, the layer one that it, it is at the interface and the SP lead bands that are more delocalized and 3D like at the Fermi level. So you have two types of electronic states. 
Here it is the band structure uh, of different sizes, and we observe uh, in, in, in red we see the hyperfunctional calculation, and in, in black the, the GGA calculation, because uh, for the larger system we were not able to calculate with the hybrid functional, so we, we just to uh, we have to be uh, confident that the, the metallization was not an artifact of, of the GGA, and we 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 see that the, even the hybrid functional that it can be able to describe properly the back, the band gap of the material in bulk also. Uh, shows these 2D metallic states for these uh, bands. This is the smallest uh, layer uh, with two layers of BBO and four of BBO. This is uh, six layers of BBO and two layers of BBO. This looks rather similar. So the number of BBO layers doesn't change the, the doping of the B3, B3 plus band. Uh, here, because the height of this pocket is more or less the same in this material, but when we perform a larger cell with more BPO layers that dope with electrons here, really, the, this electron doping induces a, a larger hole doping at the bismuth 3 plus, right? So uh, these are uh, the, the, um, the metallic bismuth 3 plus at M are not very sensitive to the number of BBO layers and the interfacial states, the level of uh, lead doping depends strongly on the number of BPO layers. Now that we understand the electronic structure of the system and the, how the, 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 the distortion, the crystal distortions uh, uh, changes in this B layer, we uh, want to we want to study the superconducting. Uh, what would be the the mechanism of superconductivity in this uh, material that was already observed experimentally? So what we have we started to 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 calculate the electron phonon coupling uh, of this material. The the electron phonon coupling of this material already in bulk was already was studied before. Here is Gabi Kotliar, that uh, well, we know him very well. They, they studied, um, because up, uh, up to this year, uh, GGA calculations were not able to describe properly the electron phonon coupling of BBO. And the point was that the, the, the gap was not well reproduced, the, 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 the Peyer's distortion was not uh, very properly described with GGA, so you need you need more uh, more precise techniques, and they demonstrate that if you use either a GW or a hybrid functionals, you can um, uh, obtain an, an electron phonon coupling that it is three times the one that you obtain with GGA. And with this correction, they could explain a high TC of 30, 32 kelvins in this material. So with this paper, they, they solve a, a problem in the, in, 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 in the literature that the, the people were not, uh, uh, there, no, there was no consensus on what, what was the origin of the superconductivity in this material, and they demonstrate that it is electron phonon coupling. And uh, then, uh, three years ago, they could uh, measure uh, the, the electron phonon coupling through ARPES, so uh, angular resolved photomission spectra. And they observe kinks that indicate strong electron phonon coupling, especially with breathing modes. So the, the coupling of phonons were the, the, the modes, the phonon modes that were operated in, uh, were operating in this material were the breathing distortions that as I already described, the stretching distortions that are like the breathing ones, but two-dimensional, and the ferroelectric distortion. These three modes contribute to the electron phonon coupling that explain the high TC superconductivity in this material, in the bulk form. So we, we started to study the electron phonon coupling of the B layer, but 
uh, in the in heavy layer, we cannot think about a, a breathing distortion operating mode because it, it is essentially three dimensional. So we studied only these two modes because they, they, we break the translational translational symmetry. So the, the breathing mode was uh, not operated anymore. So we studied from a fo frozen phonon approximation <clears throat> the stretching mode and the ferroelectric mode. Uh, in, in, in theory, the, the way you, you can calculate the electron phonon coupling, uh, the, there are some realistic ab initio calculations, very, very de demanding, uh, that uh, this, the, the, the electron phonon coupling is this complex double sum summation where you have some uh, vertex interaction here uh, to the square, which is are described here, you have the, the potential of the system and how this potential changes with the, the ions uh, involved in the collective mode of the phonon mode that we are studying, uh, uh, average between the, 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 the Conisham, if you want, the Conisham uh, amperture uh, systems. If you do a proper uh, supercell calculation with, with the size that is commensurate with the phonon, you can estimate this uh, matrix element with the shift in the electron state, energy states with the, with the collective, uh, with the shift of the ions according to a given phonon mode, right? So if you do a proper supercell calculation, you shift the ions from the equilibrium position according to a given a collective mode and you measure this matrix element uh, with the shift of the uh, of the electronic levels, and you perform, you can estimate this number with this very complicated double sum summation. It's very unstable. It demands a very dense uh, coupling meshes uh, with the, because of these two deltas, and also you have to calculate the phonon uh, frequencies of these uh, collective modes. Uh, in a simple way, way, you can see that the, the electron phonon coupling, you have a contribution of it, it will depend uh, linearly with the density for state at the Fermi level. And then uh, with this coupling between electron phonon, with this uh, coupling of the electrons with the structural distortions. So you, you, you will have a larger uh, lambda if you have a larger density for state and also if you have a larger coupling. And there, well, you have the phonon frequencies involved in the corresponding uh, collective mode. Uh, Gabby Kotler and his uh, team demonstrate that when you calculate it with GGA, you have a, 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 an electron phonon coupling that it is around 0.3. Uh, and with this electron phonon coupling, the, the superconducting critical temperature would be around one Kelvin. And if you calculate the electron phonon coupling with this hybrid functional, you observe here that the shifting in the energy levels is three times the ones that it is observed here. Uh, no, three, well, almost. And, and you can, they, they show that they they can explain the 30 kelvins with this hybrid functional. So we will apply the same technique to calculate the interfacial phonon modes and to observe the shifting and the electron phonon coupling of the system here. We, we started here, we study here the, the stretching mode like, that is like the breathing distortion, but in two dimensions. And we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, here I show the, how the, the band structure change when we apply a distortion according to the stretching mode, what it is here indicated in the insert, and we measure the, the, the shift in energy of the electrons. This is for the, the stretching mode, and we also observe that the, the ferroelectric modes in two dimensions doesn't induce uh, any uh, effect in the electrons. So the only operating uh, collective mode that it is connecting with the electrons is the stretching interfacial mode. And we calculate the couplings here uh, 
for, for these modes. And we do it with PBE and we also with uh, the hybrid functional, the PBE is the GGA. And we obtain that with uh, GTA, we, we get like 4.6 electron volts uh, per Armstrong, and this value increases to 5.9 electron volts uh, per Armstrong. As in DOPE VBO, uh, GTA underestimates the band gap and the electron funnel capping strength. At the interface, the underestimation is less severe than in bulk. The doping breaks the charge ordering only partially because you see that the, 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 the bands that comes from the lead doesn't uh, shift, doesn't couple to the phonons. These, the only electrons that uh, couple to the phonon modes are the ones that are linked to the bit modes, right? Because lead is not close to a valence keeper situation. So it doesn't contribute to the electron phonon coupling. So here, the coupling, the, the breaking of um, charge ordering is partial because bismuth 5 plus is still empty, right? Then we calculate the, the complete uh, lambda uh, along the full Brillouin zone. We observe that there is some an anisotropic electron stretching coupling at the end pocket. We, we obtain at the level of CGA, we obtain a 0.1, a lambda of 0.1, and then we uh, calculate uh, the, the, how this value uh, changes with uh, HAC. We, could, we were not able to do this lambda calculation on, on the full Brillouin song with, a, a, with the hybrid functional. But what we did was to uh, like rescale the obtained by, by GGA or PBE uh, with these uh, factors. We divide it by the density of state obtained with GGA and we uh, multiply by the one that we obtain with HSC. And we did the same with the, with the um, matrix elements. And what we get at the end of the day is that the electron phonon coupling rescaled by a uh, hybrid functional in two dimensions, it is around 0. Uh, uh, 0.36. And with this, we are able to calculate in the Macmillan formulation, uh, we were able to estimate, not calculate, because it is a very crude estimation of, to apply in this formula to obtain TC, but we, we are brave enough to do it. And we observe that the frequencies are not varying that much in the interface as compared to the bulk, and either the, the, <clears throat> these uh, param effective parameters that has to do with the electron interactions, and we, uh, we, here we see the evolution of the TC according to the Macmillan formulation. And if we put the, 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 in this BBO family, when for bulk, which is, has the highest uh, critical temperature of 32 in bulk, um, uh, we have a density of states of 0.44 uh, states per, per electron volts. And they have, when it is doped by potassium, it has a similar uh, matrix element as when it is doped by lead. But what makes the difference between these two systems is the, charge, uh, the density of state at the Fermi level, that in the, in the case of lead, it decreases up to 0 0.26. To so it is uh, the, the critical temperature decrease from 30 something to, to almost uh, to around 10 kelvins. And in the case of the interface, we can have, depending on the width of the, of the lead layer, uh, the, the critical temperature can vary uh, from one Kelvin to three Kelvin, as it was experimentally observed. So what we are claiming here is that we can explain the two-dimensional superconductivity in this uh, B layer of BBO with the BPO, with the, with the, the with the fact that it, there is a partial breaking of charge ordering and breathing distortions. There are two types of states, quasi two dimensional, that are the ones that couple to the phonons of the, at the interface, and three dimensional that do not contribute to superconductivity. And the, there is substantial electron phonon coupling between this interfashion and stretching phonon mode that can explain the two dimensional uh, critical temperature in this. Um, 
in this interface, in this delayer. And what, what we claim is that the breaking of charge ordering uh, at the interfaces can be a new strategy to trigger fascinating 2D phenomena. Uh, I'm finishing, there is some uh, ongoing work uh, because uh, our colleagues uh, doesn't want to put lead in, in his machine. So they say, no, this is toxic. Uh, this is not environmentally friendly. So what about doing some uh, layer instead of lead with, a, a, what is the name of this material? <laughs> Estaño is in, in Spanish. <laughs> Okay, uh, this, this that is isoelectronic with lead, and we are working on this. We have some preliminary results that are quite encouraging. Uh, they were able to build the, the film. Uh, they started with STO, then uh, BSO, and then BBO, and they observed that they were able to grow epitaxial films, and they made some transport properties and observed that the, there was like a, a nor, uh, many orders of magnitude uh, of difference uh, comparing the resistivity of this film uh, as to the one that just have BBO only or BCO only. But the, there was a problem that uh, after uh, several days, uh, there was some aging on the film that they grew. So now they are trying to modify the growing conditions to put some some stuff in order to avoid this aging and to study better this phenomena. So uh, there are uh, another, uh, other ideas that you, we can trigger this uh, breaking of charge order perhaps with some uh, polarization switching, putting some ferroelectrics on top. Why not? There are some preliminary calculations that show that it, this could be the case. And why not other charge order uh, materials like uh, iron, uh, calcium oxygen 3 is it is supposed to be some uh, uh, charge disproportionated insulating material these nickelates have, have some charge ordering well and these materials that have balance keeper systems with charge ordering are interested to uh, can could be uh, could could trigger the same phenomena as barium beef methods. so thanks uh, i'm finished uh, I hope, uh, I, I think I was rather lar long the talk. I, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> and okay, this is the great. people I work with and the students and, uh, and thank to you for the invitation. No, thank you very much, Veronica. So let's, let's thank the speaker. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Veron. It was very, very interesting your talk. And guys, do you have any question? Please raise your hand here in the the Zoom. Any questions? Oh, I have a couple of questions here. So So let, let me ask you, in, the, in your first slide, the, when you were in the introduction, you had like the LAO and the STO interface, and you had the, the superconductivity there, right? And my question is, what is the source of the superconductivity there? Do you know? Like, yeah, because it's the TC2 is small, right? Yes. No, you think I, that... I, I don't know. It's probably conventional superconductivity. Um, yeah so very, but, very small. yeah yeah so it's uh it might be the bcs usual one right yes and there is like in the phase diagram of the bbo you show this cdw and the superconducting phase one it do you have there do you know if there's like a, a coexistence of those phases a what? Sorry. The, the, if there is like a coexistence of the CDW and the superconducting phase, or do you, you have to kill the CDW to go no, towards no, the... No, after a, a, an optimal whole doping, the system turns simple cubic metallic. There is no charge ordering. I see. Okay, and 
Now a technical question. How do you calculate the charge disproportionation? You have the integral yes. of the, the projected density of states or? With, uh, we calculate it with the um, Bader charge analysis. Oh, Bader, I see. Yes, Bader charge analysis uh, of the business three plus, business five plus, and this is the difference. 0 0.4 for the monoclinic, a bulk situation, and also further away from the surface. And then it decreases up to 0.1, more or less, at the surface. I see, I see. Uh, Victor, you can ask. Oh, hi, hi, can you hear me, Veronica? Yes. Okay, uh, I have a question about when you when you study the the bands um, changing the the layer thickness of the BBO and BPO. Yes. Uh, do you look at the charge transfer uh, in at the interface when you when you are changing this parameter? And uh, do you have an idea of how this connects with the TC that you see? Sorry. Wait a minute. Uh, okay. This is uh, oh. I think it, the bands changing the, the 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 thickness of the of the layers. Here, what we here we change yeah. the the thickness of the BPO, and we we haven't we haven't calculated uh, quantitatively the the charge transfer, but we you you can observe that when yeah. you have only two layers of BPO the doping is much less than when you have four, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And this induces a, a, a larger whole doping in the bismuth three plus that it is in the other band. Okay, and- And, and the you... other bands are insulating that are yeah. further away from the surface. The, the other one, right. And can you connect uh, this transfer with the TC? Like it, it's, it's because you, you have calculated the electron phonon coupling. So uh, the, main, the main quest is, is you have high electron funnel coupling, so you, you, you induce TC at the interface. But can you connect dir directly the, the charge transfer with the coupling? Yes, the because the, in the case of the V layer, it is true that as compared to bulk, you have a, the coupling is uh, smaller because you have only one operative collective mode that it is the stretching instead of the breathing distortion, you have only the stretching. Okay. But what you have is a large density of states, larger than in bulk. So what we, and the, the coupling, I am doing some, sorry. Uh, here. Uh, the, the, the um, lambda, or oh, better here, here, lambda, what we observe is that at the interface, uh, this uh, factor decreases as compared to bulk, but this one increases a lot. And the larger, uh, when the width of the BPO layer is, is larger, the density of state is larger and the coupling and the temperature will be higher because the coupling is higher. That is what we uh, understood. So we have uh, at the BBO interface, a larger dose and larger density of state, and that can explain the, the, the critical temperature in this range. Yeah, now more states can, can gap and- There are more states. The, the, the yeah. coupling is perhaps a uh, weaker, uh, but the, there are more states and you can control with the width of the BBO layer. Okay, okay, thank you. Jesse, you can ask Jesse. Oh, hello. Thank you, Veronica, for the presentation. Well, uh, seeing how you build the structure, I started to use the monoclinic BBO. Uh, why did you do that? I mean, what, there's additional distortions that you use for BBO compared to the cubic structure. The, it has any effect on the ATC or an additional, I don't know, because the motivation is, I mean, asking is because reading some papers, 
we expect that at least research expected that when we have thin films, BBO will turn to the pseudocubic structure. And I'm curious why you use the monoclinical because it has additional symmetries, uh, distortions. I don't know if you got it, the question. Perhaps, uh, I, I don't know if I understand exactly your question, but perhaps you mean that a BBO thin films uh, doesn't have this monoclinic structure. That is what you say? Yeah, more something like that. That well, at least perhaps it was... there are the um, these kind of defects that uh, that cannot. I mean, in bulk, uh, the, the crystal structure is monoclinic, uh -huh. but in, in low dimensions there are defects. Uh, even the the resistivity transport properties are rather uh, not very clearly understand. Uh, mm -hmm in thin films, in low dimensions. I think it has to do with defects. No, uh, that's, that's why I'm surprised that with the monoclinic structure, though, the calculation worked so well. Uh, no, no, that, well, I, 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 that's nice I, I introduced the, 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 crystal, the experimental crystal structure and, and relaxed around that point. Yeah, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm not predicting uh, that in the film wouldn't be monoclinic, no. No, I see, I see. but. It's still it worked, and that's impressive, I guess. Uh, that's why I'm surprised if you if you had considered these additional distortions to be some uh, free parameter or something like that. That's that's what's the question. No, no, uh, no, because I didn't study bulk. I only study bulk in order to understand the V layer, and uh, the and the in the V layer we we the, the main. Um, the, the the experiments say that it is monoclinic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Ah, you have experimental data that is showing. Yes, the, there are experimental data that they, they say that it is monoclinic. But perhaps if you control the defects, like uh, changing the environment of oxygen and atmosphere and so on, you can uh, move away from the monoclinic. But uh, uh -huh. uh, the, the experiments that we look at, uh, they, they, they claim that it is monoclinic and very similar to the ones that. Uh, uh, they get in bulk. All right, uh, thank you. Um, and if you mind, another question, please. Uh, about this is a technical question. If you use HCA hybrid functional, and yes. I'm working with some some similar samples with doped BBO, and I'm having really trouble calculating those band instructions using hybrid functionals. Yes, because it's, well, it's horrible. I, I, uh, it's a high costly computational effort and terrible. Horrible, horrible, because I mean, we, that is why we always do the things with GGA and for the smaller cells, we do it uh, together to, to be confident that uh -huh. for the larger cells, which is completely impossible uh, to do well, it. Unfortunately, with. we have to do hybrid because it doesn't correct the gap for this kind of bismutate. So. Yes, because risk. you need the gap. But here, um, what I want to know is if the metallic states are, are, are artifacts of GGA or not. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that is what I oh, uh, we have to convince ourselves. But yes, they are uh, horrible to calculate this band yeah. structure. This is mainly a task done by Solange Di Napoli. That is, I don't know if she's in the audience. She asked me if she, she wanted to be here. But what we do to work, we just do one only one uh, segment uh, to study, uh -huh. to test. We only do one segment from end to half of the segment and we try several things. And then when we are sure that we are in the right point, then for the paper we do, when we write the, the, the paper, we finish the, the one structure. Uh, but to it. study, we yeah. only move around uh, the, the main points that are the end point and and also uh, around the gamma point. I saw, I see it. Uh, just can I ask another question? I'm using too much time. <laughs> yeah. I, I used Eleven too much three. time in my talk. <laughs> uh, oh, you can okay. go ahead, Jesse. Uh, thank you. I just, uh, I read your paper, uh, it was really good. And I just didn't understand how the, I mean, the stretching mode you use the 2D gas. This is a personal question. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a student here. 
how does stretching mirrors affect the, the charge ordering, the partial break in charge ordering? I mean, it would be different if there was a total breaking of the charge ordering. Or well, very, very like nice that. question. Uh, this is a, because we, no, I, I mean, on one hand, you have this stretching mode here and, and the doping of uh, here induces uh, is this is the electron doping here uh, performed by lead that doesn't couple to the to the electron to the stretching mode right mm -hmm. because there is no shift in the uh, electronic levels but the, the s band coming from bismuth does couple to the stretching mode uh, uh -huh. if we would manage to induce some uh, breaking of charge ordering so that also the bismuth 5 plus here would be involved because you see here these are the unoccupied bismuth 5 plus right and they do couple to the stretching mode there is a big uh, shift uh, to the stretching mode but they are uh -huh. uh, they are empty if you manage if we would manage to induce a breaking of translational symmetry so that they can also participate in the metallic state, the, the electron phonon coupling would double. So the, and the critical temperature would be much larger. Uh -huh. This is what, what, we, what we predict. The, so that is why we started to think about other others ways to, to dope the system. And, it is fun, fun, fun because with uh, this element, uh, estaño in Spanish, I, I, I uh, forgot. Thin. Thin. Thin, right? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> the beta tin cell, okay. The tin. Um, with tin, uh, the, the tin, BC, BCO, it's a large gap semiconductor. And the, the bands from tin doesn't uh, do the system. What they do is they break the translational symmetry. So they leave the BBO to uh, participate both bismuth 5 plus and bismuth 3 plus. That is what we are seeing in our, in our I, I, I didn't put any, any preliminary results. Similarly, this happened with, uh, when we put some ferroelectrics. Here, with some ferroelectric, we can dope, whole dope bismuth 3 plus and electron dope bismuth 5 plus, right? So Using a ferroelectric option, you both 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 uh, bismuths, and with a metallic option that was the the BPO, you can do that. That's the point. With with BPO, uh, for, I don't know exactly why bismuth five plus uh, rather stays in empty. Uh -huh. So here you okay. see here B, the the bismuth five plus is the pocket here around yeah. X point. And it is the black line, the black line is the unperturbed uh, system. When you yeah. induce the stretching distortion, you have this red line and it is shifted, but in the unperturbed situation, it is, so it is not an occupied band. This yeah. is the band coming from lead. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, quite what, what, interesting. What it would be nice to do that it's what we are trying with team is to induce a, a complete charge ordering breaking because the, the, that will be similar to the superconductor cases now, uh, like the... exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, uh, Gabriel. Gabriel Bruno. I didn't know there was an expert in BBO in the audience. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> Very far from the expert. <laughs> Very far. <laughs> I'm just really reading a lot. Just that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, Gabriel, go ahead. Uh, could you come back to the slide that you talk about the double perovskite of BBO, please? Yes. Well, I don't have a picture of the, which slide? I didn't understood why this, uh, 
very well this structure. What is it? Is it called a double perovskite? Uh, you don't have like two atoms at the like uh, a two and b uh, b b prime b two b two prime and o six something like this. Uh, why does it call it a double perovskite? Just because of the briefing mode? Um, I, I don't. I I think I didn't follow you. There's a problem with the connection also. What, what is the origin of this doubling of the cell? Gabriel, could you please repeat your question? We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, Gabriel. Uh, sorry, I, I think it's asking... I want to I... Uh, know better about this briefing mode like, like, of the double perovskite and why this... Why can I call this a double perovskite? Uh, because the, the single... Because there are two crystalline sites of bismuth. That is why it is called double. There are two types of crystal sites. You can, the smallest cell, unit cell, can be described by a two bismuths. That is what it is called double. Then you can make a larger one, uh, put in four, uh, sometimes, uh, but you can perform a, a unit cell with 10 atoms. This is double, the, 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 the single perovskite that have five atoms. I, I don't know if okay. I answered. Okay, I, I understood. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. So, guys, let's let's thank Veronica again. <laughs> thank you, you. <laughs> thank you very much, Veronica. So, I will stop to record.